Hey guys, I'm going shooting. I'm testing the XDS 4.0 and the Glock 43. Just another range session. Been working on it, trying to bring you along for the ride a little bit more, uh, rather than have all the answers compiled. I'm trying to like let you into the process. So let's go shooting. As you know, I've been carrying a Glock 19 as the gold standard for a long time. Uh, my particular Glock 19 has the front and rear rounded by some gunsmith friends. Um, and just like the Glock 26 profile, uh, I've messed around with uh, stippling and all that stuff, but that's neither here nor there. So I also have my Zev Tech rear sights rounded for a Penix carry, so it does not dig into me as much, although it's a pretty beefy back, uh, back sight, and you know it's a pretty significant size slide. Uh, this gun has been in my carry for years, and it's a great gun. Um, as you may be aware, the double stack nature of this and the length of this are the most difficult things to carry and be uh, you know deal with concealment as well as comfort um, it's a very concealable gun and in my mind it's a it's a very comfortable gun in comparison to much of its competition that being said in the environment that I'm in, as I've shared with you, um, it is difficult to carry a double stack gun, and that is why I've been um, I've been evaluating single stacks. So here's Glock 43. Here is the XDS in comparison. A lot of people say. Oh, a single stack. If you can carry a single stack, you can carry a double stack. And absolutely, you can carry a double stack. There's no question of that. People say, well, really, this slide width is minimal. That difference, that distinction between this slide width and that slide width is minimal. Well, yeah, if you're talking about getting out your calipers and measuring the millimeters of difference, it's, it's not what someone would consider significant. Um, but it does make a difference when you're wearing it under your gut, in your, in your pants, or against your gut, I should say, in your pants. You know, it's, it makes a difference. And this distance, the distance from here to here, the distance from here to here, makes as much or more difference than this does. And so, um... You know, yes, there are guns on the market like the Glock 26 and like the M&P uh, 9C or the M&P Compact, like the FNS Compact that are both double stack and uh, shorter. And those people would say are a bit more concealable. But you're still dealing with the 
fatness. You're still dealing with the thickness inside the waistband. And uh, that's not super comfortable when you're getting up and sitting, you know, through the day, sitting down, doing all that. It's definitely manageable. It's definitely doable. But just think some things to consider. I'm going to talk to you about what we're what I'm working through on the Glock 43 and the XDS. Again, the Glock 43 and the XDS and 4.0 just let you into the process. So as you've seen tons of things online probably up to this point, um, the Glock 43 has available for it several aftermarket um, base plates already. Uh, these are the ones by Terran Tactical. There's there's no problem with having the Glock 43 at its standard configuration of six and set six round magazines, both of them. But personally, uh, with the competition that's out there, the XDS and the Springfield uh, and the Smith and Wesson Shield with higher capacity, if I was going to leave the Glock 43 alone, uh, one more round. Um, and two more rounds on the extended mags would make an impact to me. So if I didn't have an option on the Glock 43, I would probably leave the Glock 43 alone. The Terran Tactical mags have proven to be reliable. You guys have heard a lot about those probably on other reviews. They do have a two uh, round base plate and a uh, single round a base plate. So this magazine now holds seven rounds and this magazine now holds eight rounds. Um, this base plate, you can compare just a, a standard Glock base plate, which this is a for, for a 19, so it's not the same exactly as the 43, but you get the general idea that basically that difference between the standard Glock base plate and the, the millimeter or two millimeters of difference is what you're giving up to add that round. And in my mind, this doesn't affect the concealability significantly and does up the round the capacity now true or false guys we're giving up capacity to go single stack already this gun is not uh, a high cap gun if you want a high cap gun you need to buy a high cap gun like a double stack <clears throat> these guns are filling a different purpose so I just came back from a range session and this is the XDS and 4.0 um, and you know we've talked about it a little bit already but I want to bring you into what I'm thinking these differences between these three guns are significant what we're what you're trying to figure out is which gradation fits you so this gun is roughly the width but slightly thinner than this gun this gun is significantly in my mind thinner than its double stack competition like the M&P full size Glocks or mid range Glocks um, so a lot of people would be looking at guns like the M&P compact the FNS compact the Glock 19 you know the list goes on and on and you know those are great guns this gun as proven for years of my life is very carryable my question that I'm working on right now is first is the single stack option viable for me because you know the round count is so significantly changed um, can I be comfortable with that? And the answer has become yes for my situation right now. It is better to have a gun on me than to not have a gun. And uh, the capacity of these guns, though not great, are uh, sufficient. They are a concession that I'm willing to make. Let's put it that way. They're, they're a concession that I'm willing to make. Um, and remember, this is a sliding scale. You don't have to agree with it. This is just a personal situation, okay? So some would argue you don't need to carry a gun at all. Others would argue 
If you're going to carry a gun, you might as well have two. Um, if you're going to have two, they might as well be as high capacity as possible. I often carry uh, two guns. My old, when, I, when I carried the Glock 19 and the Glock 26, the Glock 19 and the Glock 26, I was finding that my uh, Smith & Wesson J-Frame was being used uh, a lot because that was my fallback when I needed something that was not able to be seen at all and I needed to be in a different kind of you know dress situation. It's, it's a good gun, but like I realize the extent of my capability with it, and it's limited. I mean, it's super limited. And so as I was finding myself carrying my Smith & Wesson J-Frame more and more, and I was remembering its limitations at the range, I felt pressure to, uh, or my limitations with it at the range, I felt pressure to find other solutions. So this is what I'm working on right now. As you know, we've got Glock 43, Springfield 4.0. In my mind, the advantage of the Glock 43 at this point is weight, familiarity for me, and, and, and that's very personal, right? So weight, familiarity for me, and profile. So it is smaller than the XDS. Now I realize that we could be looking at the shorter version of the XDS. I'm comparing it to the 4.0 because my reason for going XDS will be um, that if, if I do that, it will be that it is offered in a configuration that is unavailable with the Glock platform. And that is that it is thin but still gives me this, the sight radius and the feeling of a closer to full-size gun. Right now, the fact that this is heavier than this significantly affects the perceived recoil significantly enough for follow-up shots to get back on target uh, more quickly. Right now my performance as far as accuracy has gotten to the place where it's very very similar at defensive ranges. So for me what I'm finding that's happening is on my day-to-day -day basis this gun is enough lighter and thinner than the Glock 19 or the Glock 26 that it is uh, a huge upgrade when it comes to comfort and it is full size enough to feel like and shoot very much like a full size gun and so I am finding a lot of enjoyment in the XDS. It carries as invisibly and as the Glock 43 for me. The only difference is if I need to wear dress, dress pants particularly, then I need just a little smaller profile when it comes to weight. And so this has been useful in that category. But as far as the belt is concerned, if, if I have a good full-size gun belt on, which is all the time, um, this gun is something that uh, I'm finding a lot of enjoyment in. Now, I've not changed the sights on these because I wasn't sure um, if I was keeping them. But I'm running the sights as are factory, and I, I wanted to compare them as they come from the factory. Obviously, you know, I don't know very many people that are a huge fan of the Glock sights. I'll tell you this, there's enough of a ledge there to, um, to use them in one-handed manipulation. They are plastic and you can break them. You can't even get them hot enough to melt, but I don't know a lot of people that do that. 
um, and they do their job. I think the Glock sights don't get very much love. They're super cheap, but you can use these sights, and you can use them effectively, and you can use them for a long time. And anybody that tells you that you have to upgrade the sights on a Glock to use the gun well, like, you're crazy if you don't have night sights, bro. I mean, that's just not the case. With a good flashlight, you can use these sights as long as you need to. Now, that being said, obviously, you'll see on my other guns that I, I do normally change out my sights, and these, I'm sure, will be changed at some point. It's just not a necessity. Um, I'm trying to determine which sights that I'm going to use. I like the Trijicon HDs. Those have been my go-to sights, but they have a higher blade, and it can cut into you. So if you're looking for an appendix sight, uh, a sight to go on your appendix carried gun, um, it's, it's a tall blade, you know, and, I'm, and you're looking for a really profile gun, low profile gun, I'm looking at all the solutions out there. So looking for something that's roughly the same height as the current sight with a larger dodge in it. When it comes to these sights, there's not a lot of lip here. They are steel sights, so they're nice enough to, to, to consider uh, keeping them. You can do one-handed manipulations with it. I probably will upgrade the sights at some point, but I probably will be slower to upgrade these sights because this front fiber optic sight pips, picks up so well. I favor this mag release over this mag release. I find myself, and perhaps it's just because of familiarity, I find myself having to double strike that and reach for it a little bit, bit more, move my hold to hit that, but I'm getting familiar with it and it's working out okay. This is ambi, which is great. This is not ambi, but it can be switched, so if you're a left-hand shooter, you could switch it to go the other direction. This gun is slightly thinner overall and uh, obviously shorter. So, if I were looking specifically at the XDS in 3.3 versus the Glock 43, for my intents and purposes, if I had the, the extra money to put the Terran Tactical uh, base plates on the mags that I'm going to use, I would strongly consider the Glock 43 because it's overall lighter and uh, it will do the same job with a slightly lower profile. The fact that it's a 4-inch gun gives me a longer sight radius and at least at this point appears to be allowing me to stretch out a little bit longer shots quicker. Both of them have the same capability, it's just a matter of what I can do easier, faster, the lower learning curve. Um, it's also heavier and that front weight on the gun some people might not like it in the balance but I think actually it helps follow-up shots significantly I like I mean again I'm used to carrying a Glock 19 and for me this gun this gun even with the, the short grip feels much more like the Glock 19 in carry size um, a lot of people talk about, oh, I hate that my pinky doesn't work there. Well, listen, guys, your shooting grip should be uh, focused on this finger and this finger anyway. If you're if you're pushing, if you're if you're putting a lot of pressure on that finger, you're going to be pulling shots. So um, it's a good thing for you to learn to to not put a lot of weight on your pressure. If you just want it sitting there, great. But if you're actually gripping with that finger, um, you know, it's probably good for you to spend some time shooting with your pinky hanging there. Another thing that I've been having issue with is uh, my thumbs are normally in the front forward facing position when I'm shooting. And as a result, I'm having trouble with my thumb writing here. So I'm having to remember consciously to move my thumb over because it won't lock back at the end. Uh, slide, the slide won't lock back at the end. And so I'm, I'm having to 
remind myself of, of that, but I'm getting used to it and it's doing just fine. So what I'm finding is that on a daily basis, I'm carrying the XDS and 4.0. And when I'm really dressed up or I really need something lighter, I'm carrying the Glock 43. And because I want to give the Glock 43 more time, I'm finding that, you know, allowing it to go into my, uh, my ankle rig is a good, a good solution for me right now. So that's what's happening more times than not. And, uh, I think that you know that this may be uh, the XDS and 4.0 may end up being my my regular carry gun. It's so weird to hear hear myself say that, but as I've kind of worked up through this process, it may become my regular carry gun. I still need to uh, give it more time, but right now I am using it a lot, um, and I'm comfortable with it. I can shoot it well enough to uh, consider it a viable option. All right, now I did have one stoppage, one failure to extract today. Let me show you the type of round. I was doing a, a mixed bag, just feeding it all kinds of defensive and mixed ammunition. And I had a failure to extract with uh, this round. It's a soft tip. I believe these are made by a Remington. They're kind of an obscure round, and if you're familiar, um, they can easily uh, be the problem um, for a lot of guns. Uh, so far, that's the first stoppage that I've had in this gun. Um, like I said, I've had difficulty with the XDS not uh, not locking open but that's a user error based upon my grip and I'm changing that but this particular round or, or not this one because the one that um, the one that it happened with is fired now but this type of round was what created a problem for the XDS um, now others of it shot fine so that may not be an issue but it's certainly not going to be the the type of ammo that I carry in it. I typically carry uh, Spear Gold Dot, Federal Hydroshock, um, and sometimes Remington, uh, I think they call them Golden Saber. Um, a lot of that has to do with what's on sale, but Federal Hydroshock is my go-to ammo. Still haven't had a stoppage in the uh, Glock 43. And I'm not sure that that necessarily means that it's going to be the more reliable gun overall. Still kind of early in the, in the race to figure that out. A few hundred rounds through both guns at this point. Uh, both of the guns are guns that I feel have a place in the market. I'm enjoying them a lot. Um, a lot of people talk about the fact that the XDS is significantly more expensive than the Shield um, and significantly more expensive, they say, than the Glock 43. Uh, I have not found that to be the case in the market. The Glock 43 right now is, you know, more popular and therefore is demanding a bit of a premium just because of its availability. But both of them are pretty inexpensive guns. If you, you know, it's 2015, about to be 2016. These guns are between four and five hundred dollars, uh, and the XDS is a lot of gun for the money. It, it at least appears on first observation that the uh, that the slide coating on the XDS is you know more consistent um it could just be the difference in the type of material i i know that i had a, an old xd uh when they first came out when they moved from the hs 2000 to uh licensed by springfield 
the Croatian sensation came over. The, the XD, the original one, I know that that, uh, that slide was not nearly as stout in um, the finish category as my Glocks have been as far as wear is concerned. Um, but, but it would appear that uh, for, uh, first inspection at least that the, the XDS is a really well made uh, gun with a, made to a pretty pretty beefy standard uh, I, I like it a lot I can get back on target quickly so it's just about what you can shoot well right and I found that the XDS because it's available in the 4 inch configuration I'm, I, I know that that's like this is the gun that everybody I think feels like nobody's asking for but I, maybe I, maybe I'm just the weirdo out there but it seems to me that if you're really looking for just the perfect balance of full size gun and concealability for guys that are roughly my size I'm a six foot guy um, six foot two you know just over 200 pounds you know this gun shoots like a full size gun but is able to be concealed almost as easily as the, the slightly smaller versions so the fact that this is a longer barrel and a longer slide gives me more weight but not so much more weight that it becomes significantly more uncomfortable it gives me a longer slide but not so much longer that it becomes significantly less concealable. In fact, the length of the slide on my Glock 19 was never the problem. The length of the grip was the problem with concealability. The width of the slide was the problem when it came to comfort. It's doable. In fact, it's very doable, but it is going to need, it is for me going to require that I dress around it more. So these are just decisions that you're going to have to make, guys. What do you want to carry? For me, the XDS 4.0 is being carried a lot. I like it a lot. A few things. Uh, I shoot 1911s fine, but they're mostly range guns for me. And uh, so I'm getting used to a carry gun having that uh, beaver tail safety. I'm also getting used to uh, the location of the slide stop because the slide stop uh, with my normal grip will be engaged. So I'm having to move my thumb over enough to not ride the slide stop and to allow the slide to lock back on the last round. Uh, also, I'm having, uh, you know, I need to move my hand a little bit to be able to disengage. The, I need to, also, I need to move my hand just a little bit more to be able to disengage the magazines. And uh, that's a little bit of a disadvantage, but I am getting used to it. Let me talk to you about the, the holsters that I've been using been using um, this holster from Blade Tech. Their appendix carry lightweight uh, holster. I've primarily carried it with only one of these clips on it. I've also put a loop on it, a soft loop on it, and tried that out. Um, and and now I'm 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 playing around with this second uh, clip that it comes with to be able to affect retention and also bring the gun into my waist a little bit and and that's actually done really well so I've been running this lightweight blade tech holster it's been doing a really good job and though I'm not normally a clip guy these clips are doing fine here's my normal long time use holster for my Glock 19 it's a Filster holster and I've run this for a long time as you can see some I don't, some wear and some dirt and you know it's been a great it's been a great purchase I love those guys they're doing great good work in Philadelphia um, the holster that the XDS has been riding in is from F3 it's the first holster that I purchased from them 
and I've put a Bravo Concealment Soft Loop on it, and I prefer that to the clip that came on it, though the clip was working fine. I just prefer the soft loops, and uh, this holster has been really, really positive, and you know, I have no complaints with it. It doesn't give me the audible click that some of the others do, but it, it holds in fine, and uh, and it's really, uh, you know, it's loose enough to pull out. So whereas I've had to work in some of my holsters in the past, you hear that positive retention, that positive retention, um, the F3 doesn't have quite as much positive sound in the retention, but I haven't had any difficulty with it. Uh, it's a little bit looser from the factory, or from the guy's bench, I guess. But I've been really happy with the holster so far, so thanks F3, and uh, I really like it. So those are the three guns that are working on in my carry rotation right now, and honestly, you know that that's one of the downfalls to reviewing. You're moving different things through and the one gun guy is the guy that you really want to be where you stick with something you keep it you carry it you're confident with it uh, and that's what I'm working towards when it comes to a single stack gun I'm, I know what this does I'm happy with it um, but it has some limitations for my current lifestyle have a good one